okay, so yesterday it came out that Jimmy Ward uh, broke his hand yeah. on was a special teams play. All right, and I want to defend Kyle Shanahan here and just the philosophy of putting your starters on special teams. All of these people are retroactively crushing Kyle Shanahan, oh. and it's totally unfair. Oh, it, this is tough for you. Real quick, not to derail the show, but I know why you were sitting there. You're waiting for me to mention that Carl Weathers was part of the Star Wars movement. Weren't you? Weren't you? Weren't you? You were. I know you were. Yeah. Yeah. You wanted you wanted to get that in. He was in the most recent Mandalorian. Yeah. You know, yeah, I know you wanted great. to get that in. Yeah. I know you wanted to get that in. Just for you. Yeah. Continue on. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you made that correction. Oh, now um, you kept looking at me crazy. He's like, what else was he in? What well, I, he I just know that you, yeah. your portfolio isn't as deep as mine when no, it comes to these things. No, it's just, you know, I don't care about Star Wars. I care a lot about movies. Yeah. But Star Wars... Hey, Mondo. Uh, anyway, so everybody's crushing Kyle Shanahan right now, and it's totally unfair. Like, oh, you shouldn't have Jimmy Ward returning from an injury to come out and play on special teams. Like, my favorite players on defense for the 49ers over the years, just the 49ers alone, they've all been defensive players who play on special teams. No Navarro Bowman cut his teeth. As a star in the NFL, while also playing uh, on special teams. Deshaun Golston was a star, made the Pro Bowl, was also a special teams player. Let's go to other teams. Ray, Ray Lewis played special teams. Chris McAllister, Ed Reed. You like those guys? Like, starters have to play special teams sometimes. People need to get it's over It's only a 53-man roster. That's what I'm saying. So you can't have a bunch of I, linemen out there running, covering kickoffs. And, and clearly, punts. return unit is a problem. Why not have a good tackler, one of the Fred, best ones on the team, in Jimmy Ward on the return Fred unit? Fred Warner Jr. has been playing special teams the last couple weeks. I got no problem with it. It's a fluke injury. Injuries it, happen. That's what I'm saying. If you, if you want to say fluke injuries happen and you want to say that about Trey Lance, well, then let's say it about Jimmy Ward. All right? Let's say it about Jimmy Ward. It's fine. Broke his hand. He'll be back at some point. Exactly. It's an unfortunate situation. It's unfair to criticize Shanahan. Like, I'm, you I'm see sorry. All these, you see all these teams running fake putts and fake field exactly. goals? Exactly. I need my guys on the field yes. at all times. Yes. We can't be duped. You can't be giving up yardage. Can't be doing any of that nonsense. So, I, I'm with you there with the special team stuff. You try to have a good special teams unit. You try to make the teams unit into being a special teams unit. Because, again, I refuse to call them special. Mm -hmm. Kickoff return has not been special. <laughs> no. Ray Ruben Cloud drops the ball every single week. Dude. I, it's just an adventure. And and then he he like doesn't pick the right hole. Uh, and and, just and what's crazy? He's one of their better returners the last Dude, five years. Well, he's driving me insane, Chasky. Just take the knee. Well, let's take the ball at the twenty-five yard line and call it today. As we talk about like draft allocation and money allocation. If I was running a team, and I think it's easy to say, but like, how many sixth and seventh round picks do you cut every year? It feels like a, a plethora. Of okay, them. why would you not invest in a returner every single year mm -hmm. late in the draft? I'm with you. I mean, just pull a flyer. I, I just, I don't understand. Well, it's such an important part of the game, and yet you can't find competent return play. This guy, it's Fedoni in my ear, Dante Pettis. <laughs> did, did not work Second out. Second round pick. Did not mm -hmm. work out. Second. And you know, out of all the people who text me, it was Softy when the Niners made that pick. Softy Baller, your best friend. And what did he in say? The radio Wars. I have no idea why you guys took this guy in the second round. It is a complete joke. Well, right now he's we the all difference. know in Washington he was soft. He's the difference between the Niners <laughs> being four and one and three and two. Well, you know what? Or is or it one Drake of the reasons? One of the reasons? Yeah, no, his one catch all season long. Was that it? Long. Well, he's probably had a couple more catches. Look up his stats, Benotti. See where it, see where he's at. But see the Niners. Where are they at? According to Michael Irvin, he interrupted Damon Bruce yesterday with Damon and Larry Kruger in for Ray Rado. Davis talking about who's the best teams in the NFC. Michael Irvin had to cut him off. The Eagles are the you know maybe most interesting team out there. The Giants are certainly interesting. Dallas is no, good. It, it, Minnesota's good. The Eagles and the Niners. That's that, that. That's right now. That's what we see. We go. Hey, boy, that's what we see right now. And just be real. Let's get all that other mess out the way. Let's get all the other mess out the way. Here's what this thing has boiled down to, and I love it. Michael Irvin saying the Niners are the best, what? one of the best teams in the NFC, by the way. Did you Dante mark the Pettis. tape? <laughs> That's the first time in the history of 25 years in this business I've heard Damon get cut off by someone. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that That's today. a oh seminal moment. <laughs> I would have backed off of the playmaker, well, too. You have to be a Hall of Famer uh, to cut off David Bruce. 100%. You're not cutting off David Bruce. No. I'm not cutting off David no. Bruce. No. Ray Rattle's not cutting off no. David Bruce. Michael Irvin can, though. Yes, and even then, I feel like I'm sure that the back end of that clip, Damon came over the top yeah, on it. Well, he wants some stats on that. It was that a good interview, though. Very good interview. Pah! Always. By the way, we have a name change. It's now the Xfinity mobile text line.
Not the Comcast business text line. The Xfinity mobile text line. Uh, Dante Pettis. Yeah. On the season. Yeah. You got some drum rolls, Spinoni. Stats, stats for Dante Second Pettis. Round pick, Second round pick. 49ers. Ah, uh, Dante Pettis on the season. He has one catch for 51 yards and a touchdown. It's better than Danny Gray. Danny Gray finally got his first target. <laughs> <laughs> Dante Pettis. God, that Pettis. sucks. He got one suck. catch? <laughs> That's his only play? <laughs> one catch, man. One catch. Uh, <laughs> He's going to be like Brandon Lloyd, right? He's just going to float around in the league forever. No, Brandon have Lloyd. That one year. Put some respect on Brandon he Lloyd's name. He had one good year. No, Brandon Lloyd had a few good years. Okay, he had a couple he had of good years. He had an all-pro season. Yes, he, he had did. a really good year Was with that the Patriots. Cutler? Cutler in Denver. Yeah. Well, 1,400 yards. Oh. Uh, Brandon Lloyd was a baller. Just, you know, for played, on some, played on some bad teams. Yeah, all his best catches came on holds. And they did come on holds. <laughs> I see some cocaine jokes going around on the on the YouTube chat. That can't be good. Uh, Michael Irvin said the Niners are one of the best teams in the NFC. Defensively, I see that. Baldy said, hey, look, they may get beat here and there without Mosley, but they shouldn't skip a beat. Offensively, do you like where they're at right now, Shasky? What do you think about this offense right now when it comes to the 49ers? It feels like they're trending in the right direction. And I'm just going to look at the relationship between Kyle and Jimmy. It feels like they're in such a better place than what they were even a year ago. Right. Like, if we just, I don't have to go back a couple of weeks, go back a full year. Like, maybe out of necessity, it's the best, like, not the best, but like for their relationship and for them to move forward, not having somebody who's immediately pressing Jimmy Garoppolo, mm -hmm. it feels like out of necessity, they're resorting to, we have to play nice together. Yeah. And it, it feels like it's bringing out the best in both of them. All my playmakers are touching the ball. It feels like Jimmy's rhythmic. And, and again, I know it's Carolina. People can... But you can, know what? I believe Carolina has a top 10 defense. I'm with you. In they, my opinion. They've got good personnel. They've got very good personnel. J.C. Horn's really good. Brian Burns come off the edge. He's a problem. they got good linebackers. I like Carolina's defense, and they move the ball up and down the field against that defense with ease. Yeah, and I just I look at the way that they're playing right now, mixing it up. Excuse me, mixing it up and, and and hitting all their guys. Jimmy just feels like he's in a good spot, and I like where he's at. We're talking about now, he'll free Jimmy, let him throw. It's not about airing it out uh, like 40 times a game. It's about throwing on first and second down and mixing it up and keeping teams guessing. They were so predictable with the run game. What I really took away from the game Sunday, I was having the most fun watching the offense in a long, long time. Yeah, they ran the ball really well. They threw the ball down the field. And Jimmy Garoppolo gave his playmakers a chance to make plays deep down yeah. the field. Down the sideline, Tevin Coleman, George Kittle. Um, he did try to attempt the one deep ball to Danny Gray. Wasn't a great ball. Could have been picked off. But you know what? I like the shot. Take more shots. Jimmy's starting to look confident. And the way he climbed the pocket this week. I think it was the best he climbed the pocket in a very long time. Jimmy Garoppolo's climbing the pocket point. and throwing in tight windows with velocity, which tells me the shoulder's getting better. The shoulder's getting better and better with all the velocity he was throwing with. The Debo there on the touchdown, the George Kittle, uh, Brendan Ayuk. I thought Jimmy looked his best in this offense. The offensive line, because that's where it starts. You hear Baldy break it down. Aaron Banks has been fine this year. It's getting better and better and better. Now it looks like, now we're not complaining about a second round pick for Aaron Banks, are we? No. Oh, now all it, of a sudden we're saying, you know what? This guy looks like a player. It's it's looking like it's developing, and that's a promising thing moving forward. Shout Perfect. out to Chris Forster, yeah, offensive it, line coach. Yeah, it's tough to look at him on the field and not think about what happened. I'm just being honest. <laughs> hey, like my mind pivots uh, to what happened in Miami. Told me, an old co host told me when I brought it up, hey, man, Chris Forster was. You know, playing with the booger sugar in the locker in the, in the office. <laughs> An old co-host of mine told me, "Hey, man, it's pro football, man. Pro sports. Get over it. Things happen." So I was told, "Things happen." Well, Chris Forster, give him his flowers because Sprinter Burford, Aaron Banks, Jake Brindle, hot damn, they're playing some good football right now. And we did not mention Mike McGlinchey's name whatsoever. I thought this past he was Sunday. really good. Him and Jalen Moore, and you referenced Brian Burns. I mean, he's a stud. And they, I thought, for the most part, held him in check. I also think Jimmy Garoppolo did a great job of recognizing that the yeah. blitz was coming yep. and getting rid of the ball down the field. Yep. How many times has he checked down or hold on to the ball and try to move around? And you're like, God, Jimmy, just get rid of it. Mm -hmm. He was so much more decisive, and I just, I like where he's at. Yeah, no doubt. I love where he's at. Love where he's at right now as they move on to the Atlanta Falcons. are going to stay in the Greenbrier. Here's some injury stuff Shanahan addressed yesterday. He was asked if Jimmy Ward could play with a club mm. on his hand. Here's what Coach Shanahan had to say. That's what we're trying to figure out. I mean, I, there is a chance, so that's why we want to see how the surgery goes and figure out if he can, can do that after it.
And now Jason Verrett, is he ready to go? When will he be ready mm. to go? Here's what Shanahan had to say about Jason Verrett. If Verrett's good to go, I mean, he's Verrett's a big-time corner. So if, if Verrett can get these practice reps and get out there and get fully healed and um, get back into game shape and ready to go, I mean, he'll end up being our guy. All right, what about Nick Bosa? What about Nick Bosa? Here's what Shanahan had to say about Bosa and the groin. It's bothering him today. So, yeah, you always want to um, use caution, especially with Nick on that type of stuff. But, I mean, I know if he went today, if we practiced today, he couldn't go. Um, so I'm hoping he does better throughout this week. Um, but, yeah, it's, it wasn't feeling great today. So without That's Nick Bosa, without Nick Bosa, this is where I get worried because you have Atlanta coming up. Marcus Mariota is a mobile quarterback. Yes. The next week after that, Patrick Mahomes and the kids, see the Chiefs are coming to town. It's a hot ticket. Hot, hot ticket. Um, are you like trying to sell your ticket? Like, what? Well, <laughs> I've never heard you be so excited well, about it. Well, I can't really. I can't go to the game. Oh, can, can I get your Kings. tickets? I'll buy them. No, no. And it's pressure go on to the you. game. And and wants to go see my homes. Yeah, Grandpa's She's, going to that game. Yeah, and I wants to see my homes bad. Yeah. She. I mean, maybe she wants to dump me and go try to date my homes, but he is married, Anna. So uh, you can't mess with married men. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Atlanta. Marcus Mariota, mobile quarterback. You heard Baldy break down their running backs. Kyle Pitts, I have no idea he's going to play this week. Yeah, he was out with a hamstring last week in Tampa. Drake London is gigantic. Jake, <laughs> the dude looks he's, like I didn't he, realize he was that big. Be uh, you know me at wide receiver. This is one thing that I wish the Niners invested in. A big body, big, wide strong, receiver. and fast. Yeah, it just it never wears out. He made a one hand catch the other day against Tampa Bay like it was nothing. I'm like, damn, Drake London may be the best receiver well, to come out of USC in years since Keyshawn Johnson because we know USC wide receivers they struggled Steve in the Smith, NFL. Uh, had a moment. That's As a one. slot guy. Juju. Juju's okay. Juju's okay. What else? What else you got? Mike Williams, not the one with the Chargers. The other Mike Williams, the little Mike Williams. The Mike Williams he who was drafted bad. by the Detroit Tigers yeah, well, and they had to move him to tight end. Isn't Robert Woods a USC wide receiver? He is a wide receiver. Yeah, he's but he USC. He wasn't highly touted like these other guys, right. but he's been Dwayne very Jarrett. good. Dwayne Jarrett. Dwayne Jarrett was terrible. And I <laughs> thought he was going to be legit. I thought he was going to be legit. Yeah, I was way wrong. Dude, but Mike Williams was the guy before that wearing number one at USC. Remember him? Are we now a Trojan show? Oh. Um, can be. I watched a lot. Of, I watched a lot of <laughs> USC football. I actually met reason. one of the the pastors of of the of the team over the weekend. Mm. Yeah, mm. very big in the NFL. Everybody's going to that Chiefs game. I'm a little. I'm, it's going to be tough for me to talk about Chiefs. League. Well, speaking of both on but, the injury, this is what the I Falcons would do game. With him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, the trickle down effect. If you don't have that pass rush, Shasky, you don't have Emmanuel Mosley. How does that affect the well, secondary? How does that affect the D-line rotation? Does Drake Jackson have to play more snaps? Obviously, he has to play more snaps. Can he handle that? I don't know. I don't know. I would look at the Bosa thing in the long term lens where I would say if you have to sit him for a couple of days, a couple of games, excuse me, then so be it. Like it, this is about It's a long term play. It's about January. And as much as I would love to beat the Falcons and oh Joe, you gotta beat the Falcons to get to January and all that is true. If you don't have a healthy Bosa and he doesn't get right the way we need him right, you're not winning anything. Yeah. I here's my deal. And I said this last week, Shasky. Can you just get the four and four by the bye week? So one, you'd have to split. You have to split. You just have to win another game. So what is it? It goes go one and two. We got Atlanta, Kansas City, and then, and then the, the Rams at SoFi. Mm. And let's be honest, that's mm. a home game for the 49ers. Yeah, but that is a tough three game stretch. It's a tough three game stretch. See I mean, what the, the Chiefs are doing: Raiders, Bills, Niners. The NFL is no easy game. I'm with you on if you can go one and two. The the question is like. This weekend feels like the hardest of those games, even though I don't respect the roster of the Falcons the way I do the Rams. They got some the players, champs. Though. They have some players, They do though. have some players. It's going to be their Super Bowl because there's going to be a of lot course. of Niner fans down in Atlanta. It's an old-school NFC West matchup. They may even wear the red helmets this week. Is I it at no 10 a.m.? It's a 10 a.m. kickoff. Is it going to be on Fox? Fox. Old school Fox. Finally, yeah, we need to see who the. And I'll find the announcer schedule. Oh, it'll be Moose second. Johnson. We always get him. Hey, I, I'm not that. At least it's not Sam Rosen. Is Sam Rosen still broadcasting? Remember Sam Rosen? Yeah, yeah I'm done with Sam Rosen. <laughs> Sam Rosen from 06 to 2011 was doing all the Niner games. <laughs> it's a Sam Rosen day. I became, I grew to love Sam Rosen. I thought he got a job being the fifth squad, the E team, not the D team, not the C team, not the B team. He was like the yeah, F team. With him and Rondé Barber. Oh, Ooh. my God. Sam Tough Rosen. Rondé. Dude. Sam so Rosen was all well, over the place. better than Mark Sanchez. They're shoving uh, Mark Sanchez down my throat. I'm right like, on. can we stop? This is the Listen, thing. No, no, it's no. The same I'm growing up Mark Sanchez. He's growing up. He was good in London. Green Bay, New York Giants. He Are was good. Serious? He was good. He, I thought he was good. 
Give me RG three. Kugler. I need RG three over him. Number one. Yeah, and right. uh, the other guy, I'm sick of this guy. If I gotta see. <laughs> Fitzpatrick again. He is the bootleg wannabe right. version of Thank quarterback you. play of Mc, uh, uh, Pat McAfee. He's everybody, garbage. Everybody made a big deal when he said swag. He's like, garbage. He's, he's garbage. The whole it, look, the analyst. I don't like it. All the stuff coming like out it. of his mouth. I don't like it. Move him out the way. Put yeah. Whitworth in there. Get Tony G out Whitworth, of there. Whitworth, Sherm. That's all you need. Yeah, you don't and need then when anymore. Akeem's ready to come back, bring in Akeem to leave. I think Akeem should take Kirk Herb Street's, Herb, Kirk Herb Street's spot. <laughs> I need more to keep to leave at Gus Johnson in my life. David Redwood City listening on the radio. Let's talk about the Jimmy Garoppolo performance. What's up, Dave? What's happening? You're on the roast. What's up? What's up, boys? How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. Hey, so I got a question. First off, I'm one of the Jimmy G haters. Okay. <laughs> but I do have to say, I do have to say, last week he looked like a competitor. Yep. Right? Like, I'm here to win. Whether it's to win or whether it's for the contract he's going to get next year, I don't care. He looked like he was in it to win the game. My question to you guys is last week we saw a 250-yard game, two touchdowns, no big mistakes. If we, Is it too much to ask to get 200, 250 yards, one or two touchdowns every single game, eliminate these mistakes because with this defense, that we are, yeah. we're looking to leave. Even without Mosley, it's possible we're, we're... Is it too much to ask to possibly get him to do that on a regular basis? Because all we need right now is Trent Dilfer with this defense. I, That's all I got, no, guys. Yeah, I point. need a little more to Trent Dilfer, though. I need a little more. Trent Dilfer, you go look at those numbers. Dibs was bringing it up last week. He was throwing for like 102, 120. Can we agree? Like... That was 20-something years ago. Right. The era Jimmy, of football has changed dramatically. Jimmy's better than that, though. Have some respect. Jimmy's better than Trent Dilfer. Yeah, no, I'm, but I'm saying that like the football has evolved so dramatically no where it's so skewed in the offensive no direction in terms of the rules and stuff. I, yes, you're going to need more than Trent Dilfer. My, my question is, can I get what I got from uh, the big stiff in Denver and Peyton Manning the year that they won it when Carolina yeah. and them faced off in the Super Bowl? That was an elite defense. They got minimal production because they had some great yeah. playmakers on I, the edge. I just That's disrespectful to Jimmy Garoppolo. He's better than Trent Dilfer. He's better than Brad Johnson. Let's put some respect on the same. Film on Mike and Keenan. We'll get to you on the other side. I promise but you we'll get to you on the other side. Important. And it well, is let's important. Continue talking and he's not about turning the ball over no, right he, now. He looked great. Two straight games. He no no great turnovers. On Sunday. You no gotta turnovers. give this his flowers. No, no doubt. All right. What's coming up on the game sponsored by the Golden State Warriors? We're gonna take your calls. Film on Mike and Keenan. You're on the other side. We'll get into a little Draymond Green situation. More Niners talk as well before we get to the changeover. Boy, this show has flown by.